The year 2013 marked the African Union's Golden Jubilee. A milestone marking the birth of the Organization of African Unity, OAU, which evolved into its current form in 2003. To mark this auspicious landmark, the African Union chose the theme Pan-Africanism and the African Renaissance. It was also a historic gathering too, as it was the first time a woman would preside over the two-day gathering as Commission Chair. Nkosazana Jamini Zuma, South Africa's former Home Affairs Minister, beat Jean Ping to the title in a bruising election last year. But it was conflict which dominated the AU summit's agenda, particularly the Mali crisis which had erupted a year earlier. In the build-up to the historic summit, several pre-summit meetings took place. Those tackled other conflicts afflicting Africans, particularly in Somalia and the Sudans. On the Sudan's border crisis, Salva Kiir and Omar al-Bashir held rare face-to-face -face talks in the days before the summit. Their ongoing border clashes were a major concern in the pre-summit meetings at the AU headquarters. The border disputes are a direct spillover from the decades-long civil war between South Sudan and Sudan. These tensions continued when the South seceded in July 2011. Hundreds of thousands of people have been displaced. Scores more killed. Well, it was thought a lasting peace was reached when the two signed a peace agreement here in Addis last September. One of the conditions that both sides withdraw troops and create a demilitarized zone. Neither side stuck to that agreement. The AU Commission's chair lady encouraged both sides to stop reneging on peace agreements. President El Bashir and President Salva Kiir have been very courageous in reaching these agreements. And it is vital that we encourage them to remain steadfast in their search for peace, security and stability in the interest of their citizens in both countries. Observers in Addis were quick to point out that previous meetings also ended with both sides assuring their commitment to peace. However, these and other items were soon overtaken by the Mali conflict. The spirit of conflict and confrontation playing out in the West African country seemed to filter into the summit debates and commissions. The South African delegation would emerge as a central player in policy quarrels on the Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo and predictably Mali. Delegates lobbied fiercely on the fringes of the summit. The economic community of West African states, ECOWAS, ruffled feathers early on by suggesting South Africa had pulled an about turn on its earlier position not to pledge troops to the Mali effort. Outside the West Africa, they've announced that they will pledge troops. In fact, they've pledged troops, they've announced that they will deploy their troops. And those countries outside ECOWAS include countries such as Chad, Rwanda, Burundi, Tanzania, and even South Africa. They've all pledged that they will send troops to assist and work under FISMA in Mali. So it must be and it will become an African-led operation. But South Africa was quick to dispel that notion. <laughs> no, no, no. No, that one is not, we have not offered any, 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 any soldiers. That discussion I'm sure the AU in particular is going to be discussing that matter, but ECOWAS is handling the matter very well. But of course, we cannot preempt the discussions of the AU. Those early exchanges set the tone for what was said to be an eventful summit.